we're clapping? Yeah, we are. We are. We are. I need to put my light down. One, two, three. <laughs> they said it couldn't be done. Mm. They said it would never happen. They said it shouldn't be done, but it shouldn't happen. And yet, here we are. Here we are. And yet, here we are. Jack of all grades has, for one week only, ceased to be a transatlantic enterprise. And we've gone 100% full British. Please welcome to Birmingham, my fucking global transatlantic co-host herself, Miss Corrigan Emerson. Good mm. She's fucking absolutely gone and done it, like an absolute mad lamb. Uh, she's only jumped on a fucking plane and come over to do this in person. An episode, the very first episode of Jack of All Graves, not conducted by Zoom, not conducted by the internet, but conducted face to face. Wild. This Pretty wild fucking shit. mad. Uh, look, if, if, if we're podcasting, I'm not going to lie, it's fucking, it's, it's unusual. It is, yes. There's an entire third dimension now. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at <laughs> you here and not just as like, yes, kind of next to my own face. Yes. I'm here. Um, you're no longer an idea. You're no longer a concept or co host. <laughs> uh, it's like the girlfriend in Canada concept. That's what, yeah. Think, well, yeah, I mean, what this has done is, is put you in meat space, you know what I mean? <laughs> Which is the most fucking horrific term, but it is. You've crossed the fucking threshold mate oh. it's like that aha video you're no longer the kind of sketchy uh the drawing you're out of the comic you're morton harkett yeah. now in, 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 in what? <laughs> so you'd say okay? oh. yeah look it up uh i do like them I, i've watched a few of their concerts on youtube it's the record, they're terrific yeah i didn't know i didn't know that was the name. so i've learned something new already what Look at this. That's what I came here for. That's the, what I came to this country for. The Joe journey is one of learning. It Relentless, is. unstoppable, constant, uncomfortable learning. And this is a problem, by the way, because um, I have come here to your fine country. Mm. And I mean, we've talked about a lot of shit on this show. It's it, whole, you don't maybe too much. <laughs> and you don't necessarily realize yeah. how many things until yeah. you're starting to try to talk to other people. Mm. And I'm like, oh, here's a here's a thing that we talked about on, on the podcast that's related to like whatever's going on here. Mm. Um, but as such, it's like, I take something that's like really benign, like, you know, that we're discussing like plants. And then it ends up with me telling confused British people about yeah. like Wolfsbane and how you could like kill yeah. someone with it. It is, a, it's a very interesting question and a good one to kick us off. I mean, Joag finding its way into your real life conversations. It's a very strange thing. And the amount of stuff that we've talked about, as you said, the amount of dark shit <laughs> that we talk about just for chuckles on a weekly basis, it isn't something that, that I find it easy or advisable. <laughs> Let's put it, I, I never talk about Joag with my work colleagues, for example. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I never slip into Joag, the Joag zone. Really? Um, you compartmentalize that? I do, actually. That's impressive. I don't think I have like compartments. It's just one big one. Mm, one big old space. One big suitcase. And uh, it's a very interesting question to kick us off. I do compartmentalize things. Uh, Joe, I'm certainly being one of them, but that's out the window. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm all up in your compartments. <laughs> <laughs> all up in my spaces. Um, right. What I'm desperate to, to talk to you about, right? What I'm desperate to ask is. Uh, you've been to you've been to the, uh, the Irish Republic before now, haven't you? Yes. Yes. You've been to London briefly, am I right? As a stopover, I'm sure you were. Well, you, Heathrow. Right. It's like that's not being in London. But in the past few days, I know you've been to Liverpool. You've been to Manchester. Now Birmingham. I have, yeah. Uh, how's it going? What are your thoughts? What have you noticed? And you can take the gloves off. There's no need to sugarcoat it. I'm, I have no sense of patriotism at all. I couldn't give a fuck. What what do you think? Um, no, I, it's been great. Everything, everybody's treated me well. Everyone's been very nice. Yeah. Um, you know, my my critiques are very like marginal of this country. Uh, for example, 
I don't know how to flush toilets properly. I okay. feel like they just kind of throw water yeah, and yeah, yeah. not yeah. like flush. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so that's been a little bit of a struggle for me. Yeah. Um, I feel like people in England go really hard every day of the week. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't like a Tuesday or a Wednesday or whatever. People seem to be like ready to party and stay mm-hmm. out and all that kind of stuff that yeah. um, I feel yeah. I feel unprepared for. <laughs> I was intensely amused by your astounded messages uh, from Wednesday night. <laughs> Mark, it's fucking, it's, it's 10.30, Mark, and they're going somewhere else. Where are Mark? their 30s? What are these what monsters? The yeah. Uh, that's hilarious to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, that was a little wild to me. The other, um, I, I don't know if to critique, but an observation that I have had of your fine country is this morning. Yeah. Um, I was watching... Uh, I think it was Good Morning something or other. Good Morning Britain. Good Morning Britain. Yes. And uh, with my TV wife, Susanna Reid. I think I knew that was a person who existed, but I did not recognize that that was what was on there. I was uh, (laughs) focused on the fact that it was like the the stories today that they just kept circling back to um, were the queen doesn't like when politicians uh, talk, but don't do. uh, And nobody... (laughs) Nobody was like, say it like, okay, it, that feels like a real easy uh, thing to rebut right there. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, d- d- sure, she's right about climate change, but that was a hilarious narrative that everyone had to take seriously. The queen. They the were fucking queen. They were asking like a group of people who were assembling for some like student climate thing that's happening, right? Mm-hmm. And they ask this group of people that's like represented by these two adults, and there's like all these kids behind them. And the host is like, um, you know, do is the sentiment that you know people are behind what the queen is saying, and yet it, and it's just like a very long pause, yeah, before they were like, Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Of course, but it felt like you know, this wasn't the space to critique it. Um, I've been having a really, and this sounds fucking tragic, right? And it, and it maybe it is, but uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this on Joe before, but I've come to take pleasure in just fucking around with people on Vista's local community workplace at Facebook group. Right, yeah. Uh, every town has them, a little Facebook group where they moan about just provincial little town things. And I've really gotten into just fucking prodding at people on our local Vista Facebook group. And I'm having an argument right now, uh, ongoing with somebody who's wondering, I wonder what celebrations there'll be in town for the Queen's birthday. Uh, or something similar. Uh, so I'm enjoying you know, posting anti-monarchist oh, rhetoric. Naturally. And, and I'm behind it. Listen, I'm for it. Uh, the other things that were on there were, is Christmas ruined because kids can't get their toys? Might and be. some poor bilk was on there trying to say like, well, let's not cause a panic because, mm. you know, your dinner will be on the table. Everything's good. And they were like, but the toys. Very and genial. that was um, a big thing. And then 37 stories on Adele's new single. Right, rewind it. Fuck it, don't care about it out. But right on the Christmas <laughs> bit. Yes. Uh, obviously, the government says don't panic by fuel. Mm-hmm. We have a fortnight of people queuing up at pumps, panic buying fuel. Last week in the Daily Fucking Mail, the worst newspaper mm. of all in the UK. Even I know that's a red. They ran an infographic saying, What foods can you cook and freeze now so that you can. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Wait. God fucking damn the government. Obviously, they're a pack of absolute pricks. But I, I, I still, I can't bring myself to believe that they want panic, that they right. want to cause unrest. Obviously, they've mismanaged everything. They've completely fucked the dog when it comes to this country. Uh, you know, COVID, Brexit, they made an absolute fucking pig's tit of the lot. But I don't believe they want to cause panic and unrest in the general population. But when a fucking newspaper prints a graphic, man, with pictures right. of foodstuffs, Things to freeze now in time for Christmas. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. And that and that was the sense that I got from this guy's what he was trying to say is like, yeah. we don't need to like freak out about that stuff. Like, yeah, you know, there's you might have trouble finding the toys on the shelves or things like that, you know. Yeah. But in terms of like being able to get together with your family and have a meal and all that, like don't panic. You're gonna be fine. And it really felt like the <laughs> the hosts were pushing back on that, like, no, but it feels like we should panic. Maybe this will be the year that we find Jesus.
collectively. <laughs> no, just the Lewis family. <laughs> the Lewis family. Maybe this will be the year. Yeah. Uh, It'll be around the, the Christmas tree singing Dazadori. And, yeah, because and... there won't be any, you know, yeah. consumer goods mm -hmm. to unwrap. So maybe yeah. this will be the other return to Jesus. Uh, that's it. That's, it's either toys or Jesus. There's no middle ground. <laughs> toys and computer games on this end and, and Jesus. Jesus. Oof. It's a rough spectrum. <laughs> it's very rough. <laughs> hey. uh, but yeah, no, otherwise, I have absolutely Listen, loved cheers. everything. Listen, cheers. Good to you. Yeah. I don't believe I've said that yet. No, but... It is delightful to see you as well. Thank yeah, better, better cheers that time. Um, no, this this country has treated me very well. I've had a great time everywhere that I've gone. Good. People have been very friendly. I've made friends everywhere. You well, know? you do that, don't you? I do do that. It's not <laughs> intentional by any stretch of the imagination. Mm. Um, it, it, I don't know. It's, I guess I am an approachable seeming person. So yeah. Uh, this was one of the, one of the early things I noticed about you. You you will absolutely just throw yourself into the the, the dialogue, which is which I love. You know, it's, it's one of the things that's okay. kept this cast going. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's like you have two choices: be weird about it or just go all just in. Just crack on. Yeah, yeah we had. Uh, I think the first one that we we encountered was like some kid in like a a, a cemetery. He was walking his dog, what? and of course, I had to pet the dog. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then he, you know, sort of like, you guys aren't from around here. <laughs> I was like, no, we are not. Uh, and he was very, he was a little weird, but he was nice. When you say kid, what were you talking? My guess, I mean, I have no sense of, sure, sure, sure. like, younger than me's age. I would say he was probably maybe like 18 or 19, somewhere in that vicinity, maybe younger. I yeah. don't know. But he was, you know, very interested in talking about the differences in the way we say things. Like I was, like, I oh, enjoy that topic too. <laughs> it was, and I was like, oh, it's a parking lot this way. He's like, no, we'd call that a car. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, and this that we're in, we call this a graveyard. We call it a cemetery. That's a car park, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so. This is the conversation we're having. Mm. Okay. Um, when we went to another. I still get my out of that though. Oh yeah, I mean we're over a year in. Yeah, I, I enjoy any time that we get to talk about that, especially when it's like really ridiculous things. Uh, but yeah, we went to a, a pub later on, and the, there was a Scottish girl uh, sitting at the table next to us. She turned, she was like, "Are you Americans?" Like, yeah. She's like, "Oh, I love your accents." And then she started talking. She said her name was Demi, but like with a Scottish accent, I was hearing it as Damie. And then she's Damie. like, "Like the actress," and then it was Damie Murr. Murr. Damn it, more. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what you're saying. But then I got to tell her that Damn one Moore. of my best friends is Damien Moore's nephew. Of course. And she freaked and was like, oh my God. She's like, I was named after her. And like, <laughs> my cousin has a tattoo and she showed me the tattoo. So I, I was said, a tattoo of Danny Moore. In G.I. Jane. No. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I take that and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'll take a picture of it. I'll send it to my my friend. And so I sent it to Mac. Very specific. And you know, Mac sent a, a text back. And he was like, actually, that's really rad. You know, <laughs> it was like, that's super cool. And so then she was like, can I take a picture of that message and send it to my cousin? Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so it was a very she's, funny. She's told so many people about that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so yeah, and we we went out to a pub with a couple of uh, my friend's colleagues the other day. Yeah. And within like three minutes of entering that bar, there was a gal named Sally hugging me uh, because she'd had a bad day. <laughs> and so, you know, I was like, you know what? It's going to be all right, Sally. And she was like, Courtney, thank you. I was like, it's Corrigan. <laughs> <laughs> Is it though? <laughs> <laughs> I, I get the sense that you could just unleash Corey in any situation. Yeah, it doesn't mean I'm gonna like it, but I know. Uh, but I'll, other I'll people will. Yeah, other people will enjoy it. So you know. So that, friends, is where you find us on mm -hmm. this week's Jack of All Graves. Uh, from last week's kind of, I'm gonna call it a filler episode. Every show has them, you know. What yeah, I mean? yeah. Absolutely. Every show has a filler episode. It's a bottle episode. Exactly that. <laughs> to this clip week's. Show. To th uh, and we're gonna do a clip show one day, by the way. I, oh, I are insist. We? Oh, okay. We'll that see. we do a clip show one day, and I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna edit it. Well, That's gonna be you. Might be. Uh, I mean, today you're learning, so... Yes, um, to those who are listening to this week's Jack of All Graves, all 10,000 of you... Uh, <laughs> to the award-winning Jack of All Graves. The award-winning, groundbreaking Jack of All Graves. I'm actually editing this week's fucking episode. It's not because Corey's on holiday. <laughs> what, um, what is it? Uh, uh, so, you know, if it sounds a little bit fucky, uh, then that's entirely my fault. But, but... 
that's not what this week's episode is all about. Next, this week's is not. It's not about the technical prowess. It's not about no. the subtleties. This week's Jack of All Graves is all about the joy of finally sharing a physical space with my co-host, uh, who is and my my co-pilot on the journey that we've been on for the past year. Journey. Joy journey, mate. Love it. Love that for us. Theme tune there. Thank you.